Hello, you guys. Just hit record so we can record this. I'm excited. This is just going to be kind of a shorter call tonight, but um, I'm excited to kind of go through this April kickoff. So when I first sent information out, I called it um, lose weight, feel great. And the more I was thinking about it, I'm like, I just want this to be a feel great challenge, right? <laughs> the losing weight happens when we feel really good doing it. So I really just want, I, I, you know, I wanted something that can really kind of just reboot and restart. I know always with when spring comes, like I just kind of feel this renewedness to get dialed in to, you know, jump forward, you know, just the warmer weather being outside more kind of looking forward to some more things, which knock on wood, I hope that we will <laughs> this year have a lot to look forward to. Um, but also it's a really good time, right? So we just finished the first quarter of the year. And um, a lot of times those New Year's resolutions that we set or those goals that we set, this is a really good time to check in with ourselves on how, how we're doing. So I wanted something that number one would kind of help us to redo that, right? Just kind of refocus on some basics that were easy to do, that can give us some, some easy wins um, to give us some motivation as we move forward into the second quarter of this year. And two, so much, even I just, I've been, this is just so much on my heart just for years in the making um, to really help people with the mindset of eating, right? The mindset of weight loss, the mindset of feeling good and in control with our food. Um, you know, I don't know if any of those scenarios that I put in the email this afternoon, like resonated with you, but all of those resonated with me, right? Um, eating good all day and then blowing it at night, um, feeling guilty, feeling ashamed of that, you know, um, making a mistake and then calling it a day, calling it a week, calling it a month, you know, waiting till Monday to jump back in, like all of these things are, they're programmed mindsets to help us to stay the same. So even though we have really good nutrition plans that we're using, um, with Beachbody and in the become better bootcamp, right. The fixate, the to be mindset, whatever, whatever one that you've dialed in and are following, or even if you're following or have followed or tried other things in the past, um, I hope this month really helps to take take a take a layer back and take the focus away from the food and put the focus back on the control for you, right? That's what it's all about, and that's what we're not really taught with traditional diets. Like I just I want I want you guys to hear and understand that if you feel like you've not been successful with traditional dieting, like that is not, that is not a bad thing. That's not something to feel bad about because it's designed that way, right? These mindsets, these, um, you know, these being successful and then not being successful and falling back, like we're programmed to do that. And the industry as a whole, the reason why it's a billion dollar industry is it wants us to do that, right? It needs us to do that. It needs us to continue to have some wins and be motivated by that, but then also need them still. Right. So I, as I kind of looked forward with this, um, in, you know, my goals as a, as your coach, um, with fit to become right. That lifestyle of becoming, becoming your best, becoming better, using fitness and nutrition as a tool to help you to reach your goals and to accomplish that. I hope it's like to like not need me anymore. As far as like telling you and showing you how to do it. Like you understand how to do it. I always want you here in the community. I think that makes such a better part, but I want you to feel like you're a contributor now, right? Because you get it instead of this up and down and, and um, back and forth, you know, as far as being successful, having to start over, being successful, having to start over. So I hope this gives us a really good platform in the next 21 days of this challenge to be able to really do just that and start doing the work on our inside souls that will help us to, to see the changes and to manifest the results that we want um, while living our life, right? Not getting to this point, losing the weight so we can do these things, but um, you know, 
being capable of doing the things that we want to um, as we go along. Because the truth of it is, we need to eat now like we've already lost our weight, right? If you have weight to lose, you have to eat now like you've already lost your weight, right? Because when we lose that weight, there's no like changing the plan, right? To maintain the weight, you have to have, you have to love what you do. And so, so often we eat, we eat well, we give up things, we restrict things, you know, we tell ourselves we can't have these certain things so we can lose the weight. But then when we get to that number, whatever that might be, or, you know, that goal, um, we suddenly lose that motivation, right? Because the thing that motivated us losing that weight is no longer there. So we, you know, revert, we see ourselves reverting back to how we handle stress, how we handle our emotions, how we do those things, um, which leads us back to those previous habits, right? And as we do those, instead of wanting to feel bad, you know, because we're no longer proud of ourselves, because we're now not doing the things that helped us to get the results, we'll just stop because none of us want to feel bad about ourselves, right? So I want you to go into that just kind of understanding the backstory um, of the dieting industry and, and kind of where we've been programmed to do why we do what we do, right? Why, why we've gone up and down and up and down, you know, if that's been something that you've had in the past um, or in your history. So for weight loss, this will be great for weight loss. I also want to encourage people to know that this is a great place to be, even if you don't really have weight to lose or a lot of weight to lose, but you really want to, to feel more in more control around food and feel good, right? Just feel good about eating and food. So many times when we do get to that place where we've lost that weight, right? We can, we feel on edge probably even more because we don't want to get it back. Right. And, you know, so there's that constant pull and that constant thinking about food and thinking about eating and when we do that, we're not really living our life, right? Food should enhance our life. It shouldn't, our life should not be about food. So let's dive into this challenge because I'm really excited to just help you with four basic principles that I think will really help. So I've been really diving into a lot of podcasts and other um, um, weight loss gurus and life coaching gurus and people to learn really about some different techniques to take out the dieting, um, to really help us help learn about mindset and about thoughts. And um, I've kind of pieced together some things that I really, really like. And the first two things that we talk about actually come from um, a weight loss mentor that I really love. <laughs> She's very brash, but I, um, I love what she teaches and I love her no nonsense approach. And her name's Corinne, Cra Corinne Crabtree. And, um, she teaches a, a no BS, no BS weight loss plan is what she teaches. So, and I really love these, these two techniques that she uses. In fact, one really helped me to finally start being willing to work on my nutrition. Um, and I'll tell you about that. And it's, it's probably something that you've heard before, but so I'm excited to kind of share with you these four things um, and to dive into that. So let me organize my notes here a little bit better and we'll kind of do that. So did you guys who are on live, so Karen, Jennifer, did you guys have a chance to look at that PDF that I sent out this afternoon? Yeah, I have it printed. Okay, Jen's got it printed. Karen, not yet. Okay, perfect. That just kind of will help help guide me. No need to have had that done, but um, this will help us. So I'm going to share my screen so that you can see this as we kind of go through it. So there's four basic things that we're going to track the over the next 21 days for our April challenge. Okay, so the first thing is, oh, let me share my screen here. It didn't share. All right, so here's the tracker page that I sent to you. I really love this little circle format. I just thought it was fun. So we're gonna track four things. Um, so we're gonna start April 10th and do this through the end of the month, but um, I left on some extra days because if you guys wanna start right away, 
start right away. If you want to keep going, keep going. I hope that this is something that you use to be able to track forever as you guys move forward because data is so important. So, but there's four things that we're going to be tracking. So number one is listening to your hunger. Number two is making a 24 hour plan for your food. Number three, your water and number four sleep. Okay. So pretty simple. This is probably stuff that you've really heard before. Nothing, um, nothing really like mind blowing. However, it will, you will really love what you see from just taking charge of listening to yourself, right? So much when we, when we dig into diets or, or we use a specific plan all the time, it's really about what the food, right? It's about the food, but they don't really teach us how to really make that work for our lifestyle, right? Like, what if you have a bad day? You know, what if you have one day in the week that it's just like crazy town, right? In your life, like, how do you make that work on that day as easily as it works on maybe Sunday, right? Where things are a little bit more relaxed at your home or you have a little bit of extra time. Um, these things, what we're going to track this this month will allow us to just just make progress right to really be in control because it's not going to really be about the food and the specific foods that you have so let's dive into these four basic things and talk a little bit about that so the first thing is listening to your hunger so um some people did a um we did a mind mindful weight loss class. I think it was in December um, last year. So those of you who did that will be familiar with the hunger scale. We talked about that and used that. For others of you, I'm going to kind of explain what this is, right? A lot of times we find ourselves just eating for um, other reasons other than hunger, right? Maybe we're bored. Maybe we're tired. Maybe we're procrastinating something. Maybe we're at an event where there's food, so we feel obligated. Maybe somebody made us something, so we feel obligated to eat it, right? There can be a lot of reasons that we, that we eat when we eat, right? So when you use the hunger scale, which is going to be number one, and asking yourself a couple of easy questions every time before you eat and as you're eating, it's going to really help you to determine what your body needs, right? What it's looking for. So this is the hunger scale. So it's kind of like, think of it like your, what do you call that? Odometer <laughs> type thing, like with a needle. Um, so on the one side we have, right, overly hungry, right? So we're starving, ravenous. And as it goes down, so maybe growling, hunger, neutral. And then on the other side is after we eat, how we're feeling, right? So satisfied, full, stuffed, bloated, nauseous, right? So we go from one extreme of being overly hungry to the other extreme of being overly full or overly stuffed, right? So the key balance to eating well for yourself is to stay right here in this middle part of the hunger scale, right? So let's say all shades of green on this particular scale, right? So we want to start eating when we're hungry, not when we're overly hungry or hangry or ravenous, right? Or starving where, you know, we can't even think about what we want to. As much as possible, we want to try to avoid being that, being extreme on that hunger scale and eating here, right? Where we actually feel hungry. So the first question that you're going to ask yourself Anytime that you feel like eating or an opportunity is presented to you to eat is just ask yourself the question, am I hungry, right? And if you feel hungry, then eat. If you don't feel hungry, then what I would suggest that you do, what I'd like for you to do is to grab your water, drink some water and find something to do, you know, or, or continue on with what you're, you're doing and um, wait to eat until you're hungry, right? So that's number one. We're just going to practice eating when we're hungry. 
So now let's say, you know, you ask yourself the question, am I hungry? And you, you say, yes, so yes, I'm hungry, right? It's time for breakfast. So when you start eating, once you finish half of your meal, I want you to just kind of pause and ask yourself, have I had enough, right? Have I had enough? So at the beginning, we're asking ourselves, am I hungry? Halfway through, pause, ask yourself, have I had enough, right? This is going to really teach you to start paying attention to those cues of what your body's telling you about if it's full and satisfied or if it still needs food. You know, a lot of times we just eat till our plates are empty, right? Or, you know, we don't, we're not paying attention. And, you know, before we know it, we've eaten something, we're like, what was that I even ate, right? So this is kind of going to help us to get into that practice of being mindful as we eat. So halfway through, am I full, you know, um, am I, am I full? Am I feeling satisfied? Let me see. Have I had enough? I was like, what's that specific question that I put there? Have I had enough? If the answer is yes, then just stop. Now that's going to be hard, right? For, I know for me, like, I, I feel like a little anxious about leaving bites on my plate, right? So if that's you too, Here's what I would suggest, and here's what I've tried to start practicing that works for me, is to put it away so I can have it later, right? That way I don't feel like I'm wasting food or throwing things away, or if it's something like I enjoy that I want to come back to, I just can pull it out any other time that I'm ready to eat it, right? So this isn't saying you have to throw all your food away or you cannot finish it. It's just, if you're, if you're, if you're feeling satisfied, I don't even want to say like full, like, I don't want you to feel like, oh, I am so full. I just want you to feel like I've had enough. I feel good. Right. That was a great meal. I feel good. I've had enough. And I want you to stop. Now, if you ask yourself that question, have I had enough? And you say, you know what? I think I'm still a little bit hungry. If you're unsure, again, grab your water, drink a little water and take a couple of minutes. And if you still feel hungry, then eat more right? So it'll help you to understand that. Now, this is going to be, I want you guys, I'm going to caution you, like, as you practice this, using the hunger scale, asking yourself these two questions, there'll probably be times when you're like, okay, I ate, but I probably, you know, in hindsight, I think I was, I think I was satisfied because now I'm feeling like overly full or, you know, um, maybe you eat, you know, unmindfully, right? Or you don't ask yourself the questions or things like that. So I want you to know, like, that's, this isn't a practice of being perfect at this. This is really a chance for us to learn how to respond to our bodies, how to listen to ourselves, right? So I don't want any pressure for you to feel, have to be perfect. I don't want you to, <laughs> I don't want anyone thinking I messed up because there's no messing up in this, right? It's just practicing it. And how you earn, you know, your box every day is just what I set up here, right? Effort, effort, put effort into it. Just try it, practice it because you'll start to learn those cues for yourself as you practice it, right? Okay. So that's number one. Does anyone have any questions on the hunger scale? Does that feel pretty doable to ask those two questions? Am I hungry? Have I had enough? Right? So am I hungry at the beginning? Have I had enough? Midway through, you know, decide and then either finish or um, continue eating until you feel that you've had enough, right? And again, I want to kind of help you to, to see, like, be here. Like, don't be overly full, right? you know, and again, that might, you might have to gauge that too. Like, what does that feel? What does full actually feel like? You know, I'm just so used to just eating what's in front of me and not paying attention to that. Right. So give yourself some opportunities to really learn from them. Okay. So that's number one, number two. So making a 24 hour plan, you guys, this was the thing that <laughs> helps me move from stuck to feeling like I could do something for myself to feel better, to eat better, right? I remember when um, the light bulb moment came when I'm like, why am I not losing weight? I run all the time, right? From that to 
um, oh, well, to lose weight, I probably need to work on my nutrition because I eat out with clients every day and, you know, we're tired when we come home and we're not planning dinners. So we're grabbing whatever or eating out. Right. Like, so, um, I, and so many times like standing in front of the fridge and saying, what should I cook? What do I feel like? Right. And allowing my my food and what I, what I fueled my body with just to be dictated by what I felt like, right. Which oftentimes weren't foods that actually helped me to feel good or gave me the best energy. And then also it could be, um, definitely a time where, um, I would overeat or just eat, you know, eat because, um, and maybe not even be eating for the right reasons. So, I said to myself, okay, I got to find a plan that works. So I found like this little Weight Watchers book and I looked at it. It was just this little book. It was very thick and it had like points for everything. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, I can't use this. Like, how can I possibly use this? That this would take forever. And it just seemed overwhelming to me. So I put that away and then told myself, okay, I can't do it. And then I thought, okay, well, if I planned out my meals, then I could do better. So I got my meal planner out, you know, maybe similar to this that I put here for you guys. And I thought, okay, I'm going to start planning out my meals. Right. And then I was like, well, I can't plan for seven days. I'm not going to feel like eating this on Wednesday or what if I don't now I have to force myself to eat this because I wrote it down on my plan. So I very easily convinced myself that this was not doable for me. Meal planning was not something that I could do. So, um, but I did get tired of feeling tired of feeling frumpy, of feeling low energy for my kids. And so I knew I needed to start somewhere. So I decided that I was just going to plan what I ate for that day, right? That I could do that. So every morning I told myself, no food will hit my mouth until I've written down what I'm going to eat for that day. Right. So I would just do that one day at a time. I would think through my day and I would write down what I was going to, what I was going to have. So I'd write down my breakfast, my lunch, my dinner. Um, and I, um, I found success in that. I found like I could stick with that. And, you know, I found that if I had written down a certain vegetable for dinner, it was okay to swap it out for a different vegetable, but I knew I would have a vegetable because I wrote it down. Right. So that's our second basic practice is for you to create a 24 hour plan each day. So now this isn't a 24 hour plan of the foods that you should eat. Okay. I don't want it to be a bunch of, you know, oh, that's probably not on my food list or that one's not a good food to lose weight. Like I want you to write down the foods that you'll eat. So throw out, fixate, throw out to be mindset, throw out you know, Weight Watchers, throw out whatever you need to for right now. And I just want you to focus on writing down things that you'll eat. Okay. Things that you're realistically going to eat. So if you look at a scale of one to 10, when, once you've gotten your plan written and say, okay, how do I feel about this food? Right. You should be feeling at, at least a seven, eight, nine, or 10, that you are going to enjoy this food and this plan that you wrote down. Okay. If you're not feeling that, then you need to go back and you need to rewrite your plan or change it so that it can be a little bit easier for you. Right. So here's a, here's an idea. Like I thought back of, you know, kind of where, where was it that I started? Right. And what did I do? So like for breakfast, um, instead of not having breakfast, which is what I typically was doing a lot, I wrote down something simple that I could grab and take with me, which was at the time a protein shake. Um, I think it was called EAS and then um, a half of a bagel, right? So that might be something that was doable for that. Lunch, I knew I was going to eat out with clients. So um, I would try to think through, okay, where am I going to be eating and what choice that can I make that might be a little bit better, right? That can, um, that can help me to 
lose a little bit of weight or be a little bit better. So it might've been just like putting dressing on the side, or maybe I didn't have, you know, uh, maybe I had a side salad instead of a, um, some fries or something like that. Right. Or maybe it was my favorite restaurant that I really loved. And I was just, I knew what I was going to get that I got, you know, or that it was Mexican and I would have chips and salsa, right. Whatever it was, whatever I knew that I was going to eat, I would write that down. Okay. Same thing for dinner and for snacks. And then I knew for me, like at the time I ate ice cream every night. So I would write that down. Right. Um, and eventually instead of having a bowl of ice cream, a big bowl of ice cream with melted peanut butter and melted chocolate and, um, you know, whatever else I felt like I, I started to make a little bit better choices. Right. So instead I would eat a smaller bowl of ice cream. And then um, I would maybe have just the peanut butter or the chocolate, right? So like over time, I was able to tweak my 24 hour plan with small things. So I was still eating what I was in, what I wanted, what I was enjoying, um, but in ways that would help me to start feeling a little bit better, right? To having more energy, right? So it was really the first time that I really stopped looking at things as restrictive and saying, okay, I can have this, but what can I do today to lose weight? Right. So instead of saying all of this should, you know, I shouldn't have this, or I can't have this, right. Those negative thoughts, those things that immediately turn our attention to those things and wanting that I try to develop this plan, this 24 hour plan into things that would help me to feel good about the food that I was eating, but also make small tweaks and changes to get where I wanted to. Right. And that ice cream sundae eventually turned out to two Hershey kisses, which now has turned out to, um, really a nighttime routine of just reading or doing a meditation or something like that. Cause it really wasn't about the ice cream. As I got down to it, it was really about doing something for me at the end of the day after taking care of everyone else. So that can evolve over time. But as we get started, you guys, like, I don't want you to think too much about what I should and shouldn't put on this plan. I want you to think about what am I going to really eat? What am I really going to eat today? And um, putting, putting and making that a plan that feels good to you. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, allergies. So a seven or better, it has to be a seven or better. If it's not, <coughs> and you don't feel very excited to eat that food, you got to change your plan, right? You will grow over time as you start to see this exercise will teach you to mindfully eat. That's the biggest part of that, right? You will want to eat better and to make those changes probably more so over time. But the first step is to teach yourself that you can eat the foods that you that you plan to eat, right? That you can make that and make some mindful choices. So here's how you do it. I'm gonna encourage you to do it first thing in the morning, right? In the morning, and I don't want you to spend more than three or four minutes on it. So this should be quick. If you're thinking too much about it, you're going over too many rules in your head, right? This shouldn't be about rules. It should be about what are you really going to eat? So doing it, do it first thing in the morning. This will help you too, like, to plan without emotional baggage, right? Do you feel a lot stronger in the morning and better clarity and things like that? I do. And so it'll help me to make sure that I'm planning with the right mindset when I do it in the morning. Um, also, if you do this in the morning, it'll help you to feel, um, it'll help you to think ahead, right? You'll say, okay, well, what am, what am I gonna be doing today? Where am I gonna be? Um, so that you can actually kind of plan for that. If I'm going to be out all afternoon, I know I need to be able to either eat something takeout or plan and take something with me, right? All of those types of things. So it'll help you with your daily planning too. So let me show you this. I put this planning page together for you and you can use this or just kind of use this as a guide and use your to be mindset tracker or whatever you want to do. Um, but these are the components that'll really help you to do that. So this has a place for your breakfast, your lunch, dinner, snacks, right? Um, and then here's the question. Do I feel confident I will follow the plan, right? Is it a seven or better? 
If it's not a seven or better, then you need to make changes until you do, right? This will also have a place for your water, um, for your bedtime. And then one way that I'll make food easy for myself today, right? Has to be easy if we want to do it. So don't make something like um, a really complicated meals, you know, or if you're going to be busy or you have soccer with two of your four kids, you know, that night that, you know, you're not going to be home until 730 at night. Don't make it, don't make it easy, harder for yourself. And then today's question for my fit to become coach and community. So I want you guys to like be introspective as you do this, like ask questions, say what you're struggling with, say what your victories are, like share those in the BOD group or in the Facebook group, if you like the Facebook group better than BOD, you know, so that you're getting support, like asking questions, like learning and growing from this experience. Okay. So, um, that's number one, do it in the morning. And number two on this, you guys plan more food than you think you need, right? Again, when you couple this with, with what we're going to be doing, as far as, you know, asking your, your, yourself if you're hungry, right? And planning our eating around when we're actually hungry. It's nice to have more. Like on days that you feel hungry, you might want to eat more. And if it's on your plan, you can. If you're not hungry, it doesn't mean and you have like snacks planned, but you decide you're not hungry and you don't eat your snacks. That's fine too, right? You don't have to have it just because it's on your plan. It just means that, you know, if it if it comes to it and you feel hungry, and you need a snack, you'll know what that snack is, right? You'll know what that, what that looks like. Okay. So do this in the, for keys for success, do it in the morning, every morning. So again, my rule was no food touches my mouth until I've written down what my plan is for that day. Take that three to four minutes for yourself. You guys don't overthink it. Don't make it complicated. Make it simple, right? Make it simple. And then, um, make sure that you, plan more food than you think you need. And again, ask yourself the question, like, what can I do today to feel good, right? Or what can I do today to lose weight? As you look at that plan, like if you go and, and you know, every day you're gonna eat out at Wendy's, like that's what you do. So that's on your plan. If that's on your doable plan, then, um, Maybe you take off the mayonnaise or maybe you choose a side salad, right? There's always little tiny things that we can do to shift what we do so that we're still enjoying the food, um, but making a little change, right? Another client that I helped with, he's like, Tina, I'm, he, he, he worked in construction. He's like, I will eat out every day. <laughs> he's like, I will not bring lunch from home. I will eat. And I said, okay, what are the restaurants that you eat? So we kind of talked about where he typically eats and what he typically eats. And, you know, he decided that he was going to keep burger and fries for a lot of those meals, but instead of the soda, he could do water, right? Like, so again, just a little swap that he was enjoying that he was keeping what he liked, but making some little changes. Okay. Any questions on our doable plan? Commit to do it in every morning. Posting it in the group's a great thing. Like it'll help you to stay accountable to do that too. Okay. So, and then number three and number four, going back up here to this. So water, water and sleep. So I want you to aim, I want you to have at least 64 ounces of water a day. Okay. Not a gallon. You don't have to have a gallon, 64 ounces of water, water a day, eight, eight ounce glasses. Um, and you can have more, right? Don't, you don't have to stop there, but I think that's a good benchmark that wherever you are in drinking water, whether you're already doing much better than that, or you're not, that that can be something that's doable. And then sleep, I'd like for you to aim to get seven hours of sleep. So try to get there, right? Again, it's not about being perfect from day one, if you're only getting five hours right now or six hours, or if you're like me getting probably five and a half to seven hours, um, like just try to come up with some things that'll help you get there. Maybe it's five minutes earlier to bed, right? Maybe it's making, maybe it's, you know, a rule to put your electronics away by nine o'clock, right? If you stay up scrolling Facebook or something like that, like find those things that work, that will work for you that you can just get a little bit better 
to get closer to that. Okay. So it's not about being perfect, but it's about helping us to be a little bit better. So why water and sleep? Those are the two things that are going to help us to burn the most fat, right? They will be fat burners and they will also help us to eat better because when we're not, our body's going to make sure that it gets a, our, its needs for water and sleep met um, and what that does for our body. So sleep will help you to control like your cortisone levels. It'll help you to control. Um, and that helps you to control some of the hormones that help you to feel hungry or not hungry. Um, and then same with water, right? If you're not drinking water, your body's going to ask for food and pull the water out of your food, right? So when we do a good job at controlling our water and controlling our sleep, we do much better for ourselves as far as um, helping us to be able to keep that stuff under control. So I wrote down a couple of things that, I don't know why I use notes, you guys, because then I always just like throw them all over the place and they're never <laughs> in the order that I want to. But um, when we have better water and better sleep, like it better controls our hunger. So that'll lead us to have less cravings. It'll help us to feel more satisfied in our meals, right? So you'll actually get better cues as far as understanding when you're hungry. It'll help your digestion of your food so that you feel better and uh, throughout the day and have higher energy, right? There's so many great things that happen because we do a good job with our water and our sleep. So it was, it's interesting, like my husband, Jared, like with some of the back issues that he's had, sometimes he has really good sleep. Sometimes he has really poor sleep. And it's really interesting to see how that you know, we can see how that has just like really affects like what his weight is that day or, you know, his energy levels and so many different things from just seeing that, like, and it's shocking, like, you know, he'll be like three or four pounds up on the scale after a night where he hasn't slept well. And it's like, so he, you know, he's learned that as he's tracked his weight, you know, to be able to understand what some of those other factors are. It's not just the food. It's all of those things that we do within that. So um, so that's it. So I'm going to, I'm going to be doing some more kind of diving deeper into some of these things, um, in our bot group over the next couple of weeks, as we, as we move forward on this, the thing that will help me and help you to do this the best is again, like be in there, right? Use, use the Facebook group or use the bot group, whichever one you is, is better for you. Um, you know, share your, share your plans, you know, ask those questions, right? Like I put this on here. So that if you use this tracker, it'll really help you every day to think, what am I, what do I need? Or what questions do I have? Or, you know, what is going well, what isn't going well and ask that, right? And not, it's not just me that will have answers for you, but as we all do this together, like you'll be able to share your experiences with each other and what's working and what isn't working, right? Like if bedtime is hard for you, like somebody might have some really great suggestions. You know, if water or hydrating is hard for you, somebody else might have some suggestions of some things that are working for them or think, you know, water enhancers that they're using or, you know, a fruit mixture that re they really love or, you know, just some ways that that can really help us to do that too. So, um, but I'm excited to see I'm excited to see our progress um, in, in these four things. Again, it's really, you know, eating the food and, and the food that we want. Um, and, you know, what leads to overeating is very rarely just about the food, right? It's really about listening to our bodies and being able to feel confident to say if we're not hungry, that we don't need to eat, you know, no matter what the reasons are. There's so many times that um, I know it's hard to say no because of so many other factors. So when we start to learn to say yes to us and eat because we're hungry, um, it'll work. It's, it's so nice. Right. And you'll find ways to maneuver around that. Right. Like with dinner, so there's been some nights where I'm just like, gosh, I'm just not really hungry. Well, that doesn't mean we can't be with our families and have a good dinner discussion. Right. Um, or maybe just snack on a couple of veggies 
you know, instead of, you know, having, feeling like we have to eat this meal that we don't really want at that time, right? Or have dessert right then. We don't need, you know, we can save that dessert for another time. Or if it's something that's not on our plan, it's okay for us to say, I'm going to have that tomorrow. That looks really good. I'm going to make sure I include that on my plan tomorrow, right? And making some adjustments. But all of that starts when we really apply and commit to following these basic principles that will help us to really eat when we eat when we want to eat and eat the foods that we like to eat um, and start putting ourselves in control of the I can's instead of the I can't or I shouldn't or things that really make us put us in a, a position to feel bad or ashamed or that we're doing things wrong. Questions, I'll open up for questions real quick. <laughs> Anyone seem good? Okay, so I'm going through menopause right now and it is really hard because it seems like it's just going in cycles. You know, it's, I'm, I'm feeling hungry, so I eat. And then I, you know, a few hours later, I'm hungry again. And, and I just can't, I can't, I don't know. <laughs> menopause is horrible, let me tell you. Yeah. So this will be, this will be great, right? Those first two things are so, are going to be so important for you to take on, right? So again, with your 24 hour plan, if some days you feel like, gosh, I need two snacks and three meals, like plan all of that for every day. And then the days that you don't need it and you feel like, you know, that you just don't need the extra food, just don't eat the extra food, right? So plan for what you feel, plan more than what you feel you'll need. And then make sure that you're asking those questions, right? Because a lot of times when we actually are listening for that hunger and we find, okay, well, I'm not really hungry, but I really do want to eat. Why do I want to eat right now, right? It'll help us to start to, to deal with the other reasons that we turn to food in a different way, right? Or to come up with different solutions and, you know, or even again, like grabbing that water bottle and saying, I'm not feeling really hungry, but I do want to eat right now. You know what? I'm going to give myself five more minutes on doing this, you know, whatever you were doing or whatever you needed to get to, I'm going to drink my water. And then I'm going to ask myself again. And if I feel hungry, then I'm going to eat, right? We don't have to feel bad about that. And we don't have to feel bad about eating with that too. So, but you know, again, in any stage of life, like it's not, it doesn't mean that we can't be successful with that. And I think this will help, help you to kind of see like how that's going. Definitely. There's different times. And as we go through different things, we got to learn to adjust to our bodies, women more than ever. Right. You know, with everything that we go through, even on a monthly basis, right. There's that week before my cycle starts that I'm just like, I want to eat more. I want to eat sugar. I want, you know, and, but tracking those things has really helped me to, and I think using these questions has really been able to say, do I really need to have that? Or is there something else that I need? And I can see when those times come. So for, with menopause that you might be, I don't know if that's trackable too, right? If there's, if that cycles through consistently, Karen, that you can kind of see like, oh, this is what's happening on this day, right? Like, you know, you can't, you can your menstrual cycle and stuff like that. Like, I'm like, oh, no. okay, I know that's coming oh, up. No. <laughs> no, I have hot flashes just at random. And it's just, oh, it's, it's nothing like a menstrual period. It's just absolutely nothing, you know, because your hormone levels, the um, estrogen is going down. And that's causing your, um, your body to react. And that gives you the, the hot flashes, which then, you know, the cortisol levels are just off the chart. It's just really crazy one way or another. And then it's just this huge, terrible cycle. You know, you get your belly going at it. And, and I was listening to someone once and they said, the only way you can really combat that is to do a really, really intense workout, you know, and that's supposed to help. Mm -hmm. Well, I've got arthritis in my knees and, you know, in one knee, and I can't do a lot of the, the hard, heavy workout that I used to be able to do. 
and you know I'm getting old (laughs) so and if you if you want to try the exercise too I think that that could be you know some I don't I don't know much as far as exercise and menopause and how that helps combat that but there's exercises that they don't have to be high intensity or high Mm -hmm. impact to be high intensity right you can still right. do something that's more high intensity, but keep it lower impact as far as your joints and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, well, I know that I, I mean, I did, I worked out every day for three years. And then when my mom passed away, we went out to Utah and, and then just shortly after that, my daughter had her babies and I didn't have any place to work out. And so I got out of the habit and it's been about a year now since I haven't really worked out I mean I've done it off and on and I can I can tell a difference but boy it's just really hard because you know right now I'm in the middle of repainting my house and you know late nights like one one night we didn't get to bed till 1 30 because we just had to finish and then we had to clean up you know and so my sleep is just terrible right now too yeah. because we're you know it's just compounding yeah and yeah, so sure. So what I would tell you is one, have grace with yourself when you need it, right? Because obviously redoing remodels or painting and things like that, that's not going to be every day forever, (laughs) right? Let's hope not. (laughs) So give yourself some grace in that. Um, And two, the realistic plan will really help you a lot because you can plan for what you need, right? If you need super simple, easy you can make that super simple, easy, right? Like it'll give you, it'll give you the opportunity to make it doable for you every single day. Right. So some days are going to be crazy town and and we'll have a lot of stressors. Right. And we need to give maybe a little bit more opportunity to make things easy for ourselves. So maybe that's grabbing, you know, something from the grocery store or, you know, ordering in that night. Right. So, but if you know that that's coming and you know what you're going to order or what you're going to eat. Right. And then you can know, you know, okay, so I want to keep this a weight loss day. What can I do to be a little bit better? Right. Like there's all those little swaps that you can make so you can still enjoy that food, but, um, you know, maybe make it a little bit better than where you were before or something that you can feel really good about. So Uh I think doing that on a daily basis, I know, I know for me, it really helped me to take that pressure off of the perfection and to eliminate kind of things that I didn't see coming because it was just right in front of me. Right. And again, it's not, it's not there to be perfect or say that we're never going to have a day when we overeat or, you know, things like that. And, and, you know, I hope that I'll be able to teach you a lot more as we kind of go through that on just things that I've learned, you know, from studying these other people and then my own experience. But um, Mm -hmm. at the same time, it's like, it's about like making the next best, best decision, right? So if you go off plan, let's say for lunch or something happens, or, you know, you just, you decided you weren't going to have the chips at the Mexican restaurant, but they just look too good. And you just couldn't help yourself and you did it. Well, do the next best thing, which isn't to blow dinner, which isn't to overeat on chocolate that night. Right. The next best thing is to make the best decisions for the next meal. Right. That's yeah. it. So, and that's just where we, we need to go. And I think that that, you know, as we apply that, it will help us to learn to just, um, trust ourselves. Right. And that's what this all comes down to and changing the thoughts in our head from spiraling down from negative thoughts to keeping them positive, empowering, and that we can continue to move forward rather than I failed. This isn't working for me. Why am I not capable of this when everybody else seems to be right? All of those thoughts that then lead us to either more bad decisions or into inaction and not taking any, any decisions, right? (laughs) (laughs) Which might happen with the exercise too, right? And then you're just like, oh, so I'm just going to like stop this because we want to feel good. And if we can't feel good, we don't, we definitely don't want to feel bad, 
right? We, mm-hmm. we want to avoid doing those things that will make us feel bad. So um, we have to just stop that and just say, Phew, okay, I didn't expect that, but here's what I learned from that. Here's what I could do differently next time. And okay, here's, I'm moving on to dinner, right? Or I'm moving on to tomorrow's exercise, you know, or, you know, um, I'm going to really make sure that because I didn't get to bed till 1.30 that tomorrow I'm on it, you know, 9.30 for me, right? Or whatever it needs to be for you. That's I wish, I wish. (laughs) And tell your kids to get to bed early. They need it too. (laughs) They're on spring break right now. (laughs) Oh yeah. Routine is important. So I know complain, complain, but we, we mostly really stick to that routine no matter what. (laughs) (laughs) And it's better for all of us. So um, Uh, it is. It's good. Okay. So four things we can do it. Um, Any other questions, Mindy, any questions? No. Okay. I'm excited. You guys. Sorry. No, I don't, I don't have questions. All right. Good. So, okay. Print off the packet. So officially we'll start our 21 days on Saturday, April 10th. But again, like go ahead and move forward. Like this is an awesome practice. So you, there's not one day that it's not going to really help you to move forward. So share your experiences, you guys. So, and, um, again, this isn't a, this isn't a pass fail as you, if you learn, that's the best day, right? Those learning days are the best, the very best days and coming back the next day after a learning day, after a learning opportunity, you know, showing up for that next best moment is what we're striving for all month long. Tina, where do we follow the group at? So um, I'm going to post this in Facebook. I, I decided I really, I really want to open this up to everyone. If everyone can learn these foundational principles, like we're going to be so empowered to do so much more. So you're welcome to use the Facebook group or you can jump into the bot group and uh, do it there. So if you need the link again or need an invitation, I can send it to you. What is the okay. Facebook group called again? Is it the Fit, fit to Become? Fit to Become Inspired Community. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Some people are there okay. more and just use the bod group for tracking. Some people like the bod group because it's not on social media, so they don't have to worry mm-hmm. <laughs> about getting sucked into that. And it's, um, but, it, and it's really great to track because you've got everything on your beach body on demand app. You know, you can track your food electronically if you want, you can, you know, log your workouts, your shakeology, you know, there's daily posts in there. Um, and all of that too. So, can you send me an invite through the bot app, please? Yep, I'll send it to you. Okay, you guys. You. Any all questions? Right. Keep them coming. But uh, check your email. Print off that packet. And uh, I'm excited to. I'm excited to hear your experience. So we'll do it together. Okay. All right. Thank you. Too. Thanks, you guys. We'll see Have you. Good night. Okay. Bye.